Sri Lanka is a 66,000 square kilometer island in the Indian Ocean near the equator. This beautiful tropical country has a proud history written over a span of 2,500 years. Sri Lanka is a multi-ethnic, multilinguistic, and multi-religious society comprising of a population over 22 million. The Sinhalese medical tradition dates back to the prehistoric era. The ancient Sinhalese are believed to be responsible for introducing the concept of hospitals to the world. King Pandukabaya had lied in homes and hospitals built in various parts of the country after having fortified the capital at Anuradhapura in the 4th century BCE. Ruins of a hospital in Mihintale, which was built by King Sena II that dates back to the 19th century, has been discovered and is considered as one of the world's oldest hospitals. Today, Sri Lanka has a universal healthcare system that extends free healthcare to all citizens, which has been a national priority. Sri Lanka's distinctive history, economy, people, politics and healthcare conditions have contributed to the impressive achievements in the healthcare over the past 50 years. Due to these facts, even though Sri Lanka is ranked as only having the fourth largest economy in the South Asian region, we are the number one healthcare provider in the region. During the next few minutes, you will be given a brief introduction to the South Asia's number one health service sector. As human beings, our health as well as the health of those we care about is a matter of daily concern. Regardless of our age, gender, socio-economic or ethnic background, we consider our health to be our most basic and essential asset. The right to health is a fundamental part of our human rights and of our understanding of a life in dignity. Internationally, it was first articulated in the 1946 Constitution of the World Health Organization, whose preamble defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. The preamble further states that the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic or social condition. The 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights also mentioned health as part of the right to an adequate standard of living. The right to health was again recognized as a human right in the 1966 International Convenient on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The expansion of healthcare coverage in Sri Lanka with its focus on the poor dates from the 1930s and many of the initial motivations continue to be important influencers. For a duration of time exceeding the past 50 years, Sri Lanka has been dedicated to providing free healthcare services for all its citizens. As a result of this, Sri Lanka has been able to provide much higher levels of healthcare for its people even more than the prime Southeast Asian countries, including the financial giant and stronghold of India. According to the World Health Organization's Healthcare Statistics of 2015, Sri Lanka is ranked as the leading and top-rated country in Southeast Asia for the quality of healthcare. Along with the establishment of free healthcare services, the health sector has shown a rapid advancement. The average life expectancy at birth has been increased to a level more than 70 years. Maternal mortality ratio has declined to a level around 32 per 100,000 live births. Neonatal mortality rate has declined to a level of 6 per 1,000 live births. These statistics are fine examples indeed of how our health services have been progressed. According to the World Bank Income Classification, 21 million out of the total population falls under the low middle class income range. According to the World Health Organization's classification, Sri Lanka falls under the Southeast Asia region. By classifications of both aforementioned organizations, Sri Lanka has very satisfactory values within defined parameters such as life expectancy at birth, infant mortality rate and maternal mortality ratio. The expanded program of immunization coverage as well as the antenatal care coverage is closer to 100% when compared to other regional countries. 
In Sri Lanka, the government provides good health care hand in hand with the private sector. It can be broadly categorized into two components, the curative sector and the preventive sector. The curative health sector consists of more than 600 hospitals island-wide and approximately 500 primary medical care units to provide curative health services. These hospitals consist of National Hospital of Sri Lanka and another 20 teaching hospitals that includes Colombo Group of Hospitals, Karapitiya Teaching Hospital, Peradeniya, Kandy, Jaffna, Batiklo and Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital. Three Provincial General Hospitals, 18 District General Hospitals, 68 Type A and Type B base hospitals and approximately 500 Divisional Hospitals. Out of these, intern medical officers are located from Type B base hospitals upwards. The preventive sector is mainly reinforced by around 330 medical officers of health areas placed island-wide. Preventive sector service is delivered by medical officer of health along with additional medical officers of health, supervising public health inspector and public health inspectors, public health nursing sister, supervisory public health midwife and public health midwives, field officers of school dental unit and that of special programs and special campaigns. Leading and paving the way for the Sri Lankan healthcare system is the Ministry of Health. The top hierarchy of the healthcare system includes the Minister of Health along with the Secretaries of Health and Director General of Health Services. In addition, there is a Chief Accountant, the additional secretaries for different subjects. Under the Director General of Health Services, there are about 13 Deputy Director Generals for different subjects. There are several streams under a Deputy Director General, which includes different organizations such as Family Health Bureau, Epidemiology Unit and Health Education Bureau. There is a similarly well-organized hierarchy in the Provincial Council level as well. entailing several regional directors of health service under provincial director of health services as according to the number of regions in the respective provinces. Our health system runs on the wheels of a well-organized health team. This cannot be done by doctors, nurses or midwives alone. Doctors, nurses, paramedics, minor staff, administrative staff and all categories in the health system should collaborate and contribute efficiently to provide an uninterrupted effective service. As an example, in order to provide effective service to the patient in the ward setup, the consultant, medical officers, intern medical officers, nurses, minor staff and attendants have to work in good understanding and respect as a team. You are the future of our health service. You are going to be the first contact person of this entire health system. Keep in mind that despite having many skilled consultants and doctors, regardless of the amount of money the government spends on patients, you are going to be the first contact person of our entire health system. Quality of health service, patient satisfaction, and impression of healthcare service are largely in your hands. You are about to enter into a kind of service that streams beyond an occupation. We invite you to provide the best patient care possible in order to become the world's best healthcare provider surpassing hitherto South Asian statistics.